We made it. Almost. We got a couple games left. Sunday night football. And for many of you listening to this, it's over. And Monday night football. And before that game even starts, it's over. Am I am I right, folks? But fantasy football is not quite done. But we're here uh, Sunday night of week 16. Hope it was a great, victorious week 16 for you. Already got one email about 8 o'clock that said, I won my league. I beat Alvin Kamara. So apparently it was possible. I'm Adam Azer with Dave Richard and Heath Cummings. Good evening, Heath. Did you uh, add Marquise Goodwin in any leagues? Um, I would like to congratulate... The, uh, the following people who won championships today, Chris Hampton in Auction Addicts, Jason Pierce in the Pros and Joes Dynasty League, uh, Dave Richard in the YOLO Dynasty League. Don't you do that. No, no, no. Um, don't Jamie don't Eisenberg you do that. in the Fantasy Football Telethon League. I don't care if you do that one. That's fine. And that. Team Poos Pez. I don't know your name, but congratulations on beating me in the two QBs, one cup league. <laughs> that's a good team. That's a good league name. You don't get a lot of clever league names. That's really good. Well, congratulations to all the winners out there. Hey, maybe it's going to come down to Monday night or Sunday night. That'd be awesome. Oh, hold too. on. He's congratulating me early as a reverse kibosh. All right, because I I've got a nice lead going Dave, into the Sunday Dave, night game. I I, all right, go ahead, go on, go on. No, he's got a nice. I've got a nice lead on Heath, but it's not over yet. Unless Heath, you're willing to just forfeit. Is that what you just did? Is that what you just did? Did you just forfeit um, the lead to me? And listen, now I'm the champion. I'm not going to agree to a forfeit like concede? I agreed to splitting the pot, but I concede, am very concede, pleased concede. that I agreed to splitting the pot right about now. <laughs> okay, that's fine. If Derrick Henry and Corey Davis have a big game, then Heath will win the league. In that case, I will congratulate Heath. I would be very happy for Heath if he won the league, but I really want to win the league. It's a dynasty league. I was one of the crappy teams. My team name is is a word that is synonymous with crappy, but I can't say it on the podcast. Well, I think you can say it because it's a it's, it's a proper noun. Oh, that's true. His team name is Shitty. Yeah, it's Shitty. Oh, are you kidding me right now? Like, are you kidding? I don't even have the. Are you kidding? All right. Well, let's uh, let's talk about week sixteen, guys. And I just have to mark a little edit in my notes now. Thank you, guys. Um, okay, uh, let's start with a segment called "Ouch." That hurts. And it's about Jalen. Rager? J- J- yes, Jalen, his quarterback, Jalen Brown. Oh, Carson Wentz. Jaylen. <laughs> so Jalen Hurts scored 19 points in a six-point per passing touchdown league. He scored 18 of them in the first half. And wow, what a disappointment yeah. he turned in. He just kept turning the ball over. One of the turnovers was absolute garbage. Like he was definitely down and they called it a fumble and they didn't reverse it. And I don't understand how that happened, but uh, a really bad second half for him. And he finished with 19 points. And Dave, what, what are your takeaways? Because it looked like the narrative, the story about Jalen Hurts was going to be so different when we came on the show tonight than what it ends up being. And this is one of the things that I was kind of worried about after watching him play last week remember one of the touchdowns was a screen pass that Kez Watkins took like 30 or 40 yards for a touchdown another one was a lob it was a good lob to Greg Ward but Ward made the play versus it was a contested catch and you know he he was kind of due and the other thing that I noticed just from watching the games last week was that Dallas's pass rush was starting to look good this team believe it or not is starting to look pretty good and I think they're still in some serious contention for a playoff oh, spot. They now. are. They need to beat the Giants and have Washington lose. Three NFC East teams are in contention. Philadelphia yeah, so they, they appear to be the most dangerous right now, but this is something that's changed like every two weeks yeah. during the football season. So I, I'd be curious to see how the Cowboys perform in the playoffs. No, I hope that I don't have to see that, <laughs> but yeah, that might happen. Washington just needs to beat Philadelphia next week. If they lose to Philadelphia, which has nothing to play for, then the winner of the Giants Dallas game will win. We'll go through all. We'll win the NFC. So we'll go through all of the playoff scenarios. And the most amazing thing is that uh, once again, we will not have a repeat winner of the NFC East. It's been like 17 years or something like that since we've had a repeat winner of the division. Um, Heath, I don't know if you have any thoughts on Jalen Hurts or we can go right to Phil. Oh, you know what you do? And it's part of Believe It or Not. So we'll come back to Jalen Hurts um, in our Believe It or Not segment. Let's do some fill in the blank. Fill in the blank. I was too low on blank in week 16. Heath? Hmm. I think Dave's probably more ready for this one than I am. Not even close. Wow, interesting. I mean, look, so you we, guys, we, I, I mean, I could come up with a name. On, on a, let's just let's just 
I have a question. Go ahead. <laughs> Adam, you act as if you're surprised that we weren't prepared, but how many Sundays this season have you emailed us three questions to prep for on a Sunday for a Sunday night show? This is prep? I don't think I've done that very often. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you were surprised. So you have no reason to expect that we would complete the task. <laughs> we have, there's no history of us completing the task. <laughs> All right. I know who I know. One guy that I was obviously too low on, and I think everybody was too low on Ezekiel Elliott. But he came out. He he started the game as the lead guy for the Cowboys, and he didn't really let up. He played well. He gave them a very good rushing presence. It's something we hadn't really seen from him. And Tony Pollard really wasn't that good when he did get opportunities. So before the game, I had asked somebody who covered the Cowboys, how do you think this is going to go down? And he thought if the Cowboys are going to play from behind, you'll see more Pollard than Zeke. And I thought the Cowboys would play from behind. So it's going to be real irritating for fantasy managers that sat Ezekiel Elliott in the championship game and maybe lost because of it. And now there's going to be all kinds of questions about where you draft him in 2021 and what team he plays on in 2021. It's kind of a mess. Okay, yeah, he did end up with 139 total yards and four catches. Didn't score, but that's a really good game. That's 13 non-PPR. That's 17 full PPR. And it's almost, if you play decimal, it's basically 18. So great game for him. And he had 19 carries. Tony Pollard had nine. And the game really changed when Fletcher Cox got hurt for Philadelphia. They, When he went out, their star defensive tackle, they were outscored 34-3 to after his injury. Um, Heath, who were you too low on in week 16? I was way too low on Brandon Allen, but also on Ben Roethlisberger, who looked like 2020 Ben Roethlisberger in the first half of that game. And then they were talking about it like the announcers were. It doesn't look like Ben Roethlisberger can't make these throws. They just need to call these throws more. And they started calling throws down the field more, and he looked good. Yeah, finished uh, with a... Turns out Juju can actually run more than 10 yards before he catches the ball. And they didn't throw any flags or anything. 31 points for him. So he and Dalton... Let's check the leaderboard. Uh, Did anyone outscore them? I don't think so. Let's see. Well, okay, we'll check it out. Um, All right, so that's who you were too low on. How about fill in the blank? Um, What's my second fill in the blank? I was absolutely right about... I was absolutely right about blank in week 16. Can we use Saturday games? Yeah, of course. I'd like to use Saturday games. I'm going to go with uh, Nelson Aguilar. Yeah, Yeah, you really deserve it with Nelson. A lot of his production came on one big play, but that's Nelson Aguilar. And he had four for 70 before that play. So he already turned in an okay day. And um, man, it's just amazing how he has turned his career around. He was the guy in Philly that they were like making video jokes about how Nelson Aguilar can't catch. Yeah. Was, was that a vine thing or a, there was a man who I think there was like a fire in an apartment building and they, they <laughs> needed to throw a baby out the window and someone caught the baby. And the guy said, well, at least it wasn't Nelson Aguilar who was there to catch the baby. Cause he would drop the baby. He still does drop some passes, but boy, when he gets out in the open field, like he looks like a, a superstar. He's yeah. like all and, and we recognized that ball. months ago when right. we were watching him play. And it feels like the Raiders, like John Gruden needs a reclamation project every year. Last year it was Waller. This year it was Aguilar. We'll see what guy they pick up off the scrap heap this off season, who ends up being a, a factor for them. But I, I think that that's, I think that's a great call. And Heath really still had conviction on Aguilar when a lot of people did not. And he had that big play late, and it was impressive. I didn't have Tom Brady as my number one quarterback, but I knew against the Lions he had a chance to be better than Jalen Hurts. So I would say that that was a pick that I felt good about, was putting Tom Brady uh, in my top five. I think he was in my top five. Maybe it was six for me in my rankings, but up high. Yeah. Wish, wish I had him a lot higher than Kyler Murray, that's for sure. Yeah, that was the guy I forgot about, who was better than Dalton and Roethlisberger. And, I, and if I could give you one more. Sure. I, Russell Wilson. Man, at least Roethlisberger turned his game around. Russ really didn't even do that against the Rams on Sunday. He really, it, it, he had two touchdowns. He had decent yardage, I guess. I don't know. Two, and he's got probably a top 10 quarterback right now, isn't he? No, he's not. He's, oh, he's, he's not there. I mean, when you're beat by C.J. Beathard, he, you I know thought he had 22 fantasy points. I know, but he's that's 13. not top 10. He's 13th right now. With and that's where I, I had Roger him right around there, 13 through 15. Really w- did not want to start Russell Wilson, and I had to in one of my leagues because I was going to start Baker Mayfield, but then Baker's whole receiving core 
got slapped with the COVID list. Yeah, well, you made the right call there. I guess. Well, no, I had Roethlisberger on my bench. I should have gone with Roethlisberger. Um, all right, last one. And this is the guy, for me, that really inspired this segment. I'll let you guys go first. But I'm surprised Blank didn't have a better game. Or I can go first if you'd like. I started. I, I, I thought Lamar Jackson was going to go crazy. Well, he I probably, thought he was just going to go berserk. He, he only had three touchdowns or two touchdowns. He played so well. He played yeah. so well. And mm-hmm. probably deserve like a 35 point game. He ended up with like 25. But you were Mark right. Mark Andrews Funny. dropped a touchdown. Two touchdowns. He would have had three. Yeah, right, right. I only saw the one. He dropped two. Now, look, they were tough catches, but he dropped two. They also, like, Dobbins had a short touchdown. Uh, Gus Edwards fumbled at the goal line. The fumble was charged to Lamar Jackson. So he, I mean, they were, they could have scored more points. They really destroyed the Giants, and he could have had a huge game. So you were, you know, it's a good call being that high. Everybody was pretty high on him. You had him number one. I know it didn't work out that way, but. The fantasy points didn't represent how well Lamar Jackson played. He looks ridiculous, and every AFC team should hope that they somehow lose to the Bengals because they're going to be a real headache. Um, well, no, don't they need the Dolphins to lose? No, to because the Browns, the, the Browns, no, the Colts right now are out. Are out. As we and go, the Ravens in, are in. Okay. The Ravens are in, but I don't I'm know. Glad I've heard this. If the if the Titans lose tonight, I don't see how that would affect the Ravens because if the Titans lose tonight, they have the same record as the Colts. But I'm almost positive the Ravens are in with a win, and they're going to win. Oh, that would um, be dangerous, Heath. You're Heath. I'm surprised Blank didn't have a better game. Yeah, I was thinking about what you guys were talking about there. Um, T. Y. Hilton and Robert Woods, and um, like I had some concerns about T.Y. Hilton, but I thought it would be better than this, especially if they had a couple of drives in the second half where they were chasing the score and just couldn't quite get over the top. And Robert Woods, I would have thought playing from behind against Seattle, he would have had a monster day and did not at all. Frustrating year for the Rams passing game, no question. Uh, for me, it was Melvin Gordon, and I just couldn't believe. <laughs> like, yeah. It's 17, 16 carries against the Chargers. Sure. 79 yards. I mean, it's not bad, but no catches, no touchdowns. Shocked. Really shocked that he didn't have like 100 yards and a touchdown. Disappointing. But uh, all right. Oh, well, that's that. Make sure you're watching us on YouTube, youtube.com slash fantasy football today. And let me tell you about what's coming up after this show. Normal week 17. I don't think we'll have a mailbag show. It depends how many questions we get, but typically... Most people are not playing in week 17. So TBD on the mailbag on Saturday, but typical week, um, except every show will be a little bit of week 17 and a little bit of 2021. So make sure you're tuning in. If you want to hear some 2021 talk, once week 17 is over, the new year comes about three shows per week. We're not going anywhere. We'll have the emergency pods when, when necessary. Uh, You know, we are, in my opinion, you know, the most dedicated year round show. I know there are others that are year round, but uh, I I feel like we're going to give you, the best information year round. We're dedicated to that. So make sure you uh, stick around for the off season shows. Here are your news and notes. Matthew Stafford hurt his ankle on the opening possession. That stunk. And that was the Friday, uh, Saturday game. They get Minnesota next week. I think at this point we'd be surprised if he plays, but he wants to, you know that Daryl Henderson left with an ankle injury. So if you're playing into week 17, Malcolm Brown could be your guy facing Arizona. Kyler Murray hurt his leg. Initially, we heard not such a big deal, so hopefully he can get out there. They have to win. The Cardinals need a win at the Rams, and they need to get the Bears to lose. Bears to lose against the Packers, who will have something to play for next week, and um, and uh, a win at the Rams for the Cardinals. That's how they get in. I mean, you like we are going to get Mitchell Trubisky in the playoffs, potentially, instead of Kyler Murray. That's kind We of- could get Mitchell Trubisky and Andy Dalton. We could all, get all Mitchell Trubisky bowlers. versus Andy Dalton. All the pro bowlers. You know that if the Bears end up playing the NFC East winner, the, the NFC East winner is going to win a game. I don't, know, I don't know. I don't Chicago's know. playing really well right now. Four straight games with over 30 points. Yeah. Offensive line's doing a nice job. Trubisky is doing, he's they, doing his job the right way. He had a really they definitely have a better team. defense. Their defense is getting there. Their defense is getting there. They don't have I don't a better defense. I don't, I don't feel like they're the tough team like the Ravens. Like, I look at that Ravens squad, oh, and if I were anybody in the AFC, even the Chiefs, I would not want to play the Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs. But Seattle really helped Arizona today because Seattle's win means that Green Bay on Sunday night, and I know everybody knows the score of the game by the time you listen, Green Bay on Sunday night cannot lock up the one seed because Seattle won. So Seattle's still alive for the one seed. 
Um, Dwayne Hassan's got benched for Tyler Heineke we'll, or Taylor Heineke. We hope that Alex Smith is back next week. Saints linebacker Quan Alexander tore his Achilles. Frank Gore left with an injury. J.K. Dobbins left, but he came back. Sammy Watkins left with a calf injury. Chiefs have nothing to play for next week. Justin Herbert set a record. Most touchdown passes by a rookie. He broke Baker Mayfield's record. Amazing. Tra- tra- yeah, great year. Travis Kelsey set a record. Most receiving yards by a tight end, but probably not going to lead the league in receiving because I don't know how much he's going to play next week. And Patrick Mahomes. How about this, guys? Two absolute studs. Patrick Mahomes has 24 or fewer fantasy points in four of his last six games. It's not like 24 is good, but he didn't exactly go out and wreck your league and, you know, wreck other, you know, you know what I mean? Wreck. Oh, that was one of the things I said about like the combo of he and Derrick Henry. I thought they might and Henry has and and Mahomes really hasn't. Yeah. um, And DK Metcalf, two games in his last seven with more than 61 yards. Yeah. Two touchdowns in those seven games. I'm going to struggle with um, – I mean, he's going to be a top – we were talking about him last week, a top six or seven dynasty-wide receiver, but I'm, I'm really struggling with – he should not be having this many duds. No, and I, I am nervous that he will get overdrafted. I'm nervous that I'm going to rank him too high. You know, we're, our rankings for 2021, our early rankings are going to come out next week. And Metcalf, I, I think he has to be in the top ten among receivers. If yeah. not the top five in seasonal. So uh, you're going to have to be a little careful with him, but you know what the potential is, and he's going into his third year. And I just I, I miss the Russell Wilson that we had in the first half. Of <laughs> yeah, I know. I miss that guy so much. He was so good. Well, did you um, did you do your wide receiver rankings? Those are the I ones did. I did this morning. Yeah, I, I, all uh, of mine so... are done. I just haven't had the guts to send them in yet. It, it's so it, like the anxiety about hitting send weird? on yeah. that email. It, it's really weird, but yeah. yes, I, I sent it right before the show. And so mine are sent in. Yeah, I'll probably I change it for tomorrow. I have, I, I have a Metcalf fourth. I went Adams, Hill, Hopkins, Metcalf. Um, I don't, yeah, I've got him eighth or ninth right now. I don't, you can't put him out of digs. No. I mean, I have digs fifth. I, I mean, I suppose in full PPR, you pro- you probably, sh- I don't know. I mean. So you have him ahead of Michael Thomas, do you say? I have, yeah, Adams, Hill. Th- so Michael Thomas, I just don't know who the quarterback's going to be. That's why I didn't put him higher. I am mm-hmm. yeah. I went Adams, Hill, Hopkins, Metcalf, Diggs, Ridley, Michael Thomas, Keenan Allen. Uh, so looking forward to debating it. That's going to be a lot on, on this show. By the way, Adam Schefter reporting that Jared Goff may not be able to play Next week, he hurt his thumb. So that's, wow, that's big. Uh, He's going to have further testing on his thumb. Oh, what a bummer. All right. Uh, That's that's your news and notes. The Jaguars got the number one pick. That's the other thing to note. I do want to get into fantasy here, but I feel like we need to go over the playoff picture. Why don't we do that after we do Believe It or Not? Okay. All right. Believe it or not, Heath, you had uh, Jalen Hurts. Believe it or not, Jalen Hurts should be. Do you want to change this one, by the way? No, that, that's the thing. Is I thought about it because I sent that in the third quarter and he already had 20 fantasy points. Um, there were people he finished with fewer fantasy points and that he had negative points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, the, but there were people in the dynasty community discussing last week how Hurts is worth more than Murray. Oh, I didn't even finish reading it. It was Jalen. It's oh, ridiculous. Drafted before Kyler Murray in 2021. <laughs> and it's like if Jalen Hurts had done what he's done in three games for 15 games as a rookie, then that's one de- like undeniably true because he's been much better than Kyler Murray was as a rookie. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really close between the two of them on a per game basis this season. And I would expect Hertz to improve more than Murray next year. But I don't think the sample size with Hertz is quite big. Like they are so similar. Murray is a better runner. Um, but I think he's like a Murray, better passer too. He, well, he did not make the tie. He should be. He's in his second year. He was not sure. as good as first year, um, yeah, but he did sure. not make the type of improvement this year that, that I, I thought might he agree would. With. Yes. Yes. I, I, and I think you could say the same thing for the whole Arizona offense. Like I, I think they're 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 a step better than where they were at this time last year. But they these ah, there were still games where you wish that they were 
putting their pedal to the metal and, and being more aggressive downfield. Certainly later on in the season. Yeah, I mean, well, he was. We talked hurt. about it. Maybe he was playing hurt. Of course, he was why. playing hurt. But look, he two weeks ago he had a great game, and then this week he didn't. This week was disappointing, no question. Yeah. I mean, Christian Kirk dropped. A, uh, I, would you say he dropped a touchdown on the opening? Yes. Drive? Yes. Um, they had some chances. I think Dan Arnold dropped one downfield, but it was disappointing. Um, I know a lot of people probably didn't see the game, but. Uh, yeah, I, I don't really have an explanation for why he didn't do better because he was healthy. He was he, my opinion on, on Kyler Murray. Is he healthy? Is was he running? And more importantly, was he throwing downfield and two games in a row? The answers were yes. So I don't think I'm, I don't think we can blame the arm. Just a bad game. Uh, it happens. Well, anyway, what's the answer? Believe it or not, Jalen Hurts should be drafted before Kyler. Murray. I, I don't I believe it. it. No, but they're not like I'm I think the consensus may have Kyler number two um in the top 12 and i think i probably have them closer than most people do but uh, let me ask you this believe it or not kyler murray should be drafted ahead of lamar jackson in 2021 i have it that way right now yeah it's man it's really close um, they're both top four it seems kind of silly um because kyler still hasn't shown us lamar upside I don't agree. He he was yeah. averaging more points per game than Lamar before the injury. Well, okay, but what and, is Lamar last what's year. Lamar Jackson's best eight game stretch on per game basis in his career? I'm saying comparing Kyler's best eight games to Lamar's best season. That's isn't fine. Fair. That's right. Know, right. Well, but it, but it isn't fair. I don't. I think it's. I think it's fairly fair. <laughs> I just. Well, because okay, here's the thing. You don't expect Lamar Jackson to repeat what he did last year. We know right. that, right? No, but I mean, going forward, you're never going to project him to score 31 points per game, which is what he did, something like that. Sure. So, I know that Lamar, I know that Kyler Murray's best eight game stretch, which was roughly 31 points per game, is not repeatable anyway. So all I'm saying is that he showed he could he could be that good, and they both were better than they should have been. They both were, you know, overperforming. Uh, but I do think he showed that he has the same upside. You don't think so? I, I don't think he quite did, but I it's close enough. Okay. All right. Believe it or not, Jonathan Taylor, 18 carries, 74 yards, two touchdowns at Pittsburgh. Jonathan Taylor is a first round pick in 2021. Dave, believe it or not. Believe it. He's believe it or not. Uh, yeah, I had him 12th my, when I did my uh, top 24 overall. So I think he should be a uh, first round pick. Cool. Believe it or not, Ezekiel Elliott is a top five running back heading into 2021. I don't believe it. Who's going next? Da- Heath? Me? Oh, I, th- I, th- I thought Dave usually said something else about that, but that's okay. Um, no, I don't either. Yeah, well, week 17, we'll nail this segment. <laughs> um, yeah, this is, this is week 17. The Sunday night show, I think. Um, Look, I, are we sure he's even going to be on the Dallas Cowboys? They keep, nobody's going to trade for that contract. Uh, I know. But well, did you guys do your running? Are back you sure he's still going to be on the Dallas Cowboys? Nonetheless, he's not in my top five. No, he's, he's not in my top. Believe top five. He's I put him like 14th overall, which is probably like 10th. He's not in your top 12 running backs, Dave. He is not in my top 12. Oh, he's in my top 12 running back. He's so tied to Dak Prescott. Let's not forget if he's, he's a Dallas he's a, Cowboy. He's a Dallas Cowboy. Like, sure. Jerry Jones loves him. They're not getting rid of him. Like, like this is look, he had eleven more carries than uh, he had ten more carries yeah, than Tony Pollard. Yeah, so what I'm saying is, oh, they're gonna split. They're not gonna split. It's Zeke's backfield. Well, and he's like, he's the number seven running back this year. I think we think it's probably going to go better for him next year than it did this year. It, but I mean, Adams talked about his lack of explosiveness. Yeah, pretty much all year which means he's going to need a ton of touchdowns. He, with he had Dak a 25-yard run today. He did. That was good to see. Uh, if, if he's a Dallas Cowboy, then yes, he's a top 12 running back. But I'm not sure that's going to be the case. Okay. That's probably his longest run of the season, I would think. I'm sorry. I said tw- it was over 25. It was like 30-something. It was just oh, right. the stat we'd been talking about the last week was, I think, 20-yard runs or 25-yard runs. 20 yards is, I think, what they kind of use as like big plays these mm-hmm. days, but all right, we got one more here. Calvin Ridley is a top five dynasty wide receiver, believe it or not. Calvin Ridley, uh, he's got 82 catches in thir- in 14 games. He missed one. 
1,322 yards, nine touchdowns. Calvin Ridley is a top five dynasty wide receiver, believe it or not, Heath. Yeah, and I think uh, you probably deserve a little credit. Um, I think last week when we were talking about A.J. Brown or D.K. Metcalf or something where they ranked, you said, what about Calvin Ridley? Mm. And like you look at what he's done the first three years of his career, and Julio Jones has been there for a lot of that, and now we get this period of time without Julio Jones, and he doesn't fall off like Juju did. He's still giving us 100-yard games. Um, I, I am really struggling with not just putting him number three. Uh, Devontae Adams and Tyreek will be one and two, but uh, I think Ridley might be, might be number three. I don't think there's any question about it. I think that's exactly where he belongs. The question for me is I just, I'm really nervous about Matt Ryan. I just think he didn't play well this year. He looked a lot like Carson Wentz at times, just holding the ball so long and eventually taking a sack or making a mistake or something. Whereas the other guys seem to have better quarterback situations. So that's the only thing I wonder. But, you know, great wide receivers can can overcome that stuff. I mean, he looks like a pretty great wide receiver. Does that factor yeah. in? How much, is, how much does quarterback factor in your, to your dynasty wide receiver rankings, Heath? Very little. Really? Um, some. Like, I, I've got a, a risk factor, and that factors into the risk factor, but that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. Like, I don't think it would be a bigger discount for him to have Matt Ryan. Um, I wouldn't really mark off for him having Matt Ryan. Okay. Well, uh, when we come back, we'll take a look at the playoff picture. We'll tell you who's got something to play for next week, who's got nothing to play for next week. We'll do winners and losers, top five at each position, go through the games. You know how it goes. Uh, we'll be right back on Fantasy Football today. Are we going to have a kind of normal Week 17, guys? The only team that has... Nothing to play for. Well, okay. The Chiefs have nothing to play for. Let's start with that. Is that is that it? I, I mean, seeding is up for grabs. I know like the Bucks don't have much to play for, but does it feel like we're gonna have a fairly normal Week 17? I don't think it's going to be a crazy Week 17 where we're gonna have like last year's Week 17 seemed a little terrible. There were a lot of guys that were resting that we certainly could have used for fantasy made DFS kind of fun. Well, and part of it isn't just like, and maybe I'm wrong. My recollection is that part of the week 17 madness is veteran players on teams. Like there's lots of teams that don't have anything to play for all the teams um, that are eliminated. Right. Right. Guys n- that are dinged up, not playing. Sure. Right. Right. That could definitely be the case. Like Stafford's not going to play and <laughs> you wouldn't think anyway, but if you look at the playoff picture, Kansas City clinched the one seed. So, you know, that's why this is why we don't play in a week 17. You would hate to go in there with Tyreek Hill and Patrick Mahomes or Kelsey or whatever. Um, yeah, it would be really awful to be disappointed by Patrick Mahomes or Tyreek Hill in a championship game. No. <laughs> um, Green Bay can clinch the one seed with, with two wins Sunday night, you know, against Tennessee, if they won, and, uh, and then a win against Chicago. So they need to win out. Um, Miami's in with a win. Uh, the, the, the AFC is crazy. There are like five teams vying for four spots basically, but Indianapolis going into Sunday night football, the Colts were the team that needed to win and have a loss. Uh, the Browns Ravens and dolphins were all in with a win. What I don't know is what happens to Tennessee and Indianapolis. Cause I know they split, but if Tennessee were to lose to green Bay on Sunday night, I don't know what the scenario is there. Uh, In the NFC, the NFC East is Washington wins. They're in. Washington loses to Philadelphia. That means the winner of the Dallas-New York Giants game gets the NFC East. Chicago is in with a win or an Arizona loss. Arizona is in with a win and a Chicago loss. Um, The Rams are in, right? The Rams clinched? Yeah. They must have, but they lost the division. Um, Can we go back to the AFC real quick? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure Buffalo or Pittsburgh has anything to play for that matters. They have no way of knowing who this five, six, or seven seed's going to be. They have what they have to play for. Okay, right. So if Buffalo beats New England, they move ahead of Pittsburgh, but with the same record. So they both have to win for that two seed to be in play. The only thing they have to play for, yeah, is facing Kansas City a round later. You know? Right is a no. The two plays the three. Oh, the two plays the three. If they potentially played each other, home field advantage. Home field advantage, and the Bills might get fans in the postseason. So I think they'd probably want to win against the Dolphins. Um, But yeah, you're right. It's it's really just seeding. It's not like it's not a buy. It's for a lot for these teams. 
Um, in the other NFC spots, uh, New Orleans, they are trying to play for the two seed. I think Tampa Bay can, is going to get either the four or the five. Rams, maybe the same thing. Um, so really, it's the Bears and the Cardinals and the three NFC East teams that are desperate. And then you're gonna, you might have a battle for the one seed between Green Bay and Seattle. I don't think New Orleans could get it, but I'm not sure. Maybe if they finish in a three-way tie, but I'm, I don't think so. Okay, so that's that's your playoff. We'll have answers on all this on Tuesday. Yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, let's take a look at the top five at each position. Brought to you by Adam stalling for time. All right, top five quarterbacks. Tom Brady in one half. He scored 37 points. It was really a very embarrassing performance by the Lions. But yeah. It was amazing. Uh, Dalton is you know, I wouldn't say he's on fire. He was usually around 20, 21 points, but now he scores 32 against the depleted Eagles uh, secondary. Who's their cornerback? Mike Jaquette. Is that his name? He gave up like 187 yards in this game. They they went after him. Yeah, Mike Jaquette. Come on. Eagles. We don't need to be telling people that. Well, that's what happened. So keep that in mind for whoever's starting at quarterback for, the, for Washington next week. Roethlisberger, Deshaun Watson, and Kirk Cousins round out your top five. Dave, so it's Brady way ahead of the pack. Dalton, Roethlisberger, Watson, and Cousins kind of bunched in there. I think I don't think anybody saw Dalton having a huge game or Roethlisberger having a huge game. And if you were watching Roethlisberger play in the first half, you definitely did not think he would end up as a top five fantasy quarterback, but he really did get it going. The Steelers offense did uncover Oh, look, we can throw it a little bit deep. He talked about it already. I hope they keep it up. They could also be, if, if they can really get their offense back on track, and we'll, we'll see if one half of football can lead to that. But if they can get their offense back on track, they're going to be a tough team in the playoffs. Assuming that TJ Watt's okay. I know that he got banged up in the game. If they don't have Watt and Bud Dupree, then I don't know what their pass rush is going to look like. Well, Dave, I just want you to know, I made two lineups for the Sunday million on FanDuel and one of them had Andy Dalton and the other one, my late lineup had Andy Dalton. One of them was a Cleveland Brown stack. So which one do you think? <laughs> oh man. All about Ohio there. I know I, my, my late game slate, I should actually check on this. I had Sanders. I had Dalton stacked with Gallup and lamb. Oh, damn. Yeah. Dave might be retiring. Well, it's the afternoon slate. It's not the main slate. So no, no million was one. Okay, well, I won $9. Uh, all right, hey. top five running backs. Top five, let's see, who's it? Jeff Wilson. I'm trying to think of the, the Sunday guys. All right, Jeff Wilson's going to be up there. Kamara, how about Alvin Kamara? How did he do? <laughs> he scored 52 points in non-PPR, 55. The Saturday guys went crazy. Kamara, Gaskin, Wilson. I, Heath, I almost feel like I, we just didn't do justice to Alvin Kamara because it was two days ago. But, oh, my gosh, 155 yards and six touchdowns. He's followed by Gaskin, Jeff Wilson, Samaje Pirine, and David Johnson. Um, talk to me about Kamara first, whatever you want to say, and then we'll get into the rest. I mean, it was, it was a nice reward if you got there with him because, and I know I had a, a Kamara team that for a while there, it felt like nobody could beat me because I had Alvin Kamara and Michael Thomas was out and Drew Brees was only throwing to him. And then you went through that little dry spell – and there was some wonder whether um, you'd really be able to make it to this point. And so if you made it this far with Kamara, congratulations. In my championships games, I think he was only on one of the 10 teams in the final. So I don't know that a lot of people got this, but he's got a shot now at, I was just looking, a 400-point PPR season. And he has proven that it is possible for him to catch more than 81 passes in a season. Hooray, <laughs> he did it. Where, uh, if you don't mind sharing that with us, Heath, where did you rank Alvin Kamara in 2021? He is in my top three. Yeah, I believe I had him third. I think it was McCaffrey, Cook, Kamara. That's exactly what I have. I Yeah, my question, though, is like, because I went McCaffrey, Kamara, Cook, but I don't know. I don't want Taysom Hill to be his quarterback. No, right. It's no, a, It's a big deal. Right, it's going to be fewer pass, fewer catches. Right, but then if 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 we do assume that Taysom Hill is his quarterback next year, how far does he slip? Do you just put him so far down in your no. rankings that you don't draft him? Do you make him tenth? No, I. Where you know you're six, not going to get six. Him? Yeah, I, would he go ahead of Derrick Henry in a PPR league? 
if that Kate was it, quarterback? it is the one thing that I'm still weighing is can Derrick Henry have this big year for another year without catching a lot of passes. And even if Alvin Kamara has Taysom Hills as quarterback, I, I don't know if I can do that with Derrick Henry. Uh, I would say yes. <sighs> okay. So let's talk about the other guys who finished top five. Miles Gaskin is really interesting because he didn't start. I don't think I, I believe Ahmed. I mean, they were splitting Ahmed and Gaskin had about the same amount of carries in the first half, but Brian Flores is just not going to stick with guys who aren't <laughs> effective. So he basically just gave the entire second half to Miles Gaskin, it seems. And Gaskin came up with a huge game. He had five catches for 82 yards. He had 14 carries for 87 yards. He had two touchdowns. And the lead running back for the Dolphins has been a very productive player this year since they basically since they got rid of Jordan Howard or stopped using him. Uh, so I don't know. There's much to say there, but if you started Gaskin, you, you might have gotten a little lucky because he didn't. It's not like he he didn't dominate the carries in a conventional way. They split for a half, and then it was Gaskin. Um, he's um he's going to be a, a volatile player uh, this offseason in Dynasty. Jeff Wilson, Samaje Pirine, David Johnson, anything to say there? All these guys had 25 or more non-PPR fantasy points. Huge games from five running backs. Johnson will be somebody that fantasy managers will be nervous to draft next year because he's going to be close to 30, and we, we know what the story is with him. Like, there are going to be games where he's great, like he was in week 16, and there's going to be games where he's a total nightmare, and he's also got some injury concern to him. Uh, P. Ryan, absolutely nobody is thinking about in, in fantasy. And then the third name, Adam, who, who did you just oh. mention with them? Uh, Jeff Wilson. Jeff Wilson, yeah. I, I wonder if he's got an opportunity to break out in 2021. Like, I wonder if the 49ers are just going to say, you know what, Mostert's never going to be a guy that we can rely on. He gets hurt way too much. I mean, they, they kind of already said it with his usage this season. Like, the numbers were great for him. He scored a lot of touchdowns. He was very efficient. But how often did he play 60% of the snaps? Now, Wilson really hasn't had that opportunity unless Mostert's been out. But he's done pretty well when he has had that opportunity. And he's, he's exactly the type of fit that the, the Shanahan run scheme looks for. Unheralded guy that can make the one cut and burst. And he's got that, and he's physical on top of it. So I wonder if there's an opportunity for Jeff Wilson to be the 49ers' best running back in 2021. All right, let's go to the wide receivers. Uh, I think if there's a team that's going to give people cold sweats uh, before their draft, it's going to be the Bucs. Uh, they've been, you know, I just think Ronald Jones will be interesting, the wide receivers, if Brady's back, everybody. Mike Evans, number one this week, and that's why I bring that up. Mike Evans had 181 yards and two touchdowns. Michael Gallup is number two with 121 yards and two touchdowns. Gall uh, Evans also had 10 catches. Wow. Jamison freaking Crowder. He did throw a touchdown. That helped, but he also had seven catches for 92 yards and a touchdown. Nelson Aguilar is in the top five. And Brandon Cooks with his best game, probably of the season, certainly his mm -hmm. best game in a while. 141 yards, seven catches, one touchdown. So that's your top five. It's Evans, Gallup, Crowder, Aguilar, and Cooks. Heath, what stands out there? You said the Tampa Bay receivers, the Dallas receivers yeah. might like CD lamb had a fantastic, I was surprised he wasn't top five with the rushing touchdown. Uh, um, <laughs> what's that? He was sixth. He was sixth in non PPR. Uh, he was like seventh in PPR. And then Amari Cooper had over a hundred yards, right? Like it's, it's going to be very interesting to see how those three end up. I mean, none of them were in my top 12 wide receivers. I didn't do anything past that. Um, but where they end up in the rankings for next year. Yeah, who's going to be your highest rank Cowboys receiver? That will depend partially on whether Amari Cooper is a Cowboy. That's okay, assuming he is. Probably Lamb. It's okay. going to be hard to resist CD Lamb. Okay. And uh, your top tight ends this week. I was trying, who's going to be the top tight end? Uh, oh, Jimmy Graham, of course. Uh, so Jimmy Graham had two touchdowns. And 69 yards. Rob Gronkowski had two touchdowns on two catches, 58 yards. Irv Smith had two touchdowns. Travis Kelsey only had one stinking touchdown with 98 yards. And Darren Waller had zero stinking touchdowns, but he did have 112 receiving yards. Um, did, did Darren Waller crack your top 24 overall? He did not. I think I might have him 24th. Yeah, it was a tough call. That's not the question I thought you were going to ask. 
What did you think I was going to ask? I thought you were going to ask, did Darren Waller crack your top two at tight end? Did he? He did. Over Kelsey, Dave? Wow. Yeah, can you believe it? (laughs) Kill Kittle too injury prone for you? Yeah, it's just nitpicking a little bit and thinking that we can get another really good year or two out of Darren Waller. And there will be some people that are going to run right back to George Kittle, and I totally get it. But the one thing that's always been a little tricky about Kittle has been the touchdowns. He's never had a ton of them in a year. Yeah. And Darren Waller, I believe he has more touchdowns this year than he had last year. Oh yeah. He's got plenty of yardage and plenty of catches this year. I, I think I'm at the point where I'm more comfortable taking Waller. And I also think the Raiders are probably not going to add a whole lot to their passing game this off season. I think they've got a defense that they need to completely address in free agency in the draft. Um, I was looking at this. Darren Waller is currently a top 10 PPR wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, wow. He is also currently 59 fantasy points behind Travis Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey's just amazing. I uh, four to over 1400 yards. That is wild. Um, all right. So uh, other tight ends though, that are kind of making some noise right now. Herb Smith having a pretty nice finish. Hayden Hurst scored. I uh, thought Austin Hooper would have a better game, but he just didn't. Yeah, I mean, he had a very good game. Seven for 71. He just didn't score. And yeah, I mean, that's it. And yeah, you know, if you started Kittle, like four catches for 92 yards, that's a really good game. This must have been a great week for tight ends because Kittle was like tight end eight with four catches for 92 yards. So good stuff for tight ends. All right. Uh, let's see. We got to get to your winners and losers here. Your winners. All right, Dave. DJ Chark and T Higgins. Let's go quick on this. Uh, DJ Chark's a winner for you. He's at the Colts next week. And I'm not thinking about next week as much as I am 2021 when Trevor Lawrence is going to be his quarterback. I think DJ Chark will stick around for another year in Jacksonville and he should get an upgrade with Lawrence under center. Okay. And then how about T Higgins? Higgins is going to work as both a week 17 winner and a 2021 winner. There is a chance he will end up in my top 12 among receivers. Um, he had a great game with Brandon Allen. So much of what we thought Brandon Allen was has come to fruition in these late season games and Higgins, just an an amazing catch. Again, he's really been kind of under the radar, but he's made some dominant plays and I think he's definitely got potential to be a top 12 receiver in, uh, in 2021. Okay. Uh, Heath, your winners are Noah Fant and Michael Gallup. Let's start with Noah Fant. Yeah, I think for me, at least these last few weeks have established what I thought Noah Fant was turning into, and he is going to be the uh, the breakout candidate, I'm sure, uh, probably the most popular tight end breakout candidate next year, but I, th- I really think the target volume that he's earning and the pedigree that he's got and now heading into his third year, uh, he could be a monster next year. And Michael Gallup, great way to finish the season. He looks so good today, mm-hmm. just dominant today, but it's been a really tough year for him for the most part. Um, it, what do you think? It's really like there's a lot of guys like this where you just want to know what happened during that little stretch. Um, what happened? I yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what happened. happened. <laughs> but these, this finishing stretch has at least put him in the conversation for being one of the top two Cowboys wide receivers next year. Yeah, like what round is he going to be a top one hundred pick? Yes, eighth round. Yeah, all right. He's going to be That's a very top one hundred sleeper. He's going to be in everybody's sleeper column. Michael Gallup. Uh, he was getting so many targets, running so many routes, and doing nothing with it with Dak Prescott all year long. It was the strangest thing. All right, uh, to the losers: Benny Snell and Brandon Ayuk for for Heath. All right, yeah, sum it up. Go ahead, Benny Snell. Um, like we had kind of got the indication before the game that that this was going to be uh, more of a timeshare and it started out that way. And Benny Snell just did not go anywhere. And in fairness, James Conner didn't do much, but Snell got stopped. I think at the two yard line and there was a penalty and Conner got in from the one yard line. Conner did a lot in the passing game. I wanted to almost call James Conner a winner, but the performance for both of them was so putrid that I just decided we'd go with a loser angle as instead. I, I don't really think there's much hope that Benny Snell is an actual yeah. feature running back in the NFL at any point. Brandon Ayuk, I, you got to call him. I, is he the biggest bust of week 16? One catch for 15 yards. 
uh, his six games before that, he was on pace for one. Like his, you take those six games and put them sixteen games. 120 catches, 1,515 yards, and 11 touchdowns on 184 targets. That's how good he had been, and he gets one catch for 15 yards. Was it the Kittle factor? Is that where, where you're going here? Well, I mean, I, I tweeted this out Saturday before the game. Debo Samuel in two games without George Kittle was an absolute monster, and then Kittle came back, and Debo went back to just getting four or five targets a game. And Kittle came back, and Ayuk went back to getting out – it's going to be really difficult going into next year ranking Ayuk and Debo Samuel. When we're really not sure if there's room for one of them to be a must-start wide receiver with George Kittle healthy, and there's certainly not room for two of them to be must-start wide receivers. You're saying ranking them compared to each other or just ranking them compared to everyone else at the position? Um, Chris Towers sent me a text today. He was doing his rankings, and he went a little further. I think he did some like quick projections maybe. And he had Ayuk at wide receiver 38, and he hated it. Um, I think it's going to be hard to get Ayuk in the top 30, and you're going to feel gross not having Ayuk in the top 30 with as good as he was as the rookie. Oh, but he's got to be ahead of Debo, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, he's got to be yeah. ahead of Debo. Yeah. All right, I Dave, don't think who, it's going to be that hard to put Ayuk in your top 24 if you wanted he's a, to. He's a second-year receiver. He'll be in my top 10. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, he, listen, he's going to be popular because he's got the athletic profile and he's got so much success this past season. But how many games is he going to have without George Kittle in 2021? All right, Dave, your losers are Le'Veon Bell and T.Y. Hilton. It's over for Le'Veon. I don't think we really need to get into it much more than that. And T.Y. did have some nice catches early on, but – I think people are going to have a hard time trusting him. I mean, it's, it's easy to say last week, okay, he had decent yardage. He almost had a touchdown. Let's give him another shot. It was against Pittsburgh. It started off well, and then push comes to shove. The Steelers are actually making a competitive game, and the Colts have to throw, and there, there's just nothing there that, that ends up being great for T.Y. Hilton. And now who knows what his status is going to be. Going, He might not be a Colt next year. And even if he is, Michael Pittman's going to be a popular breakout candidate they're going to use a bunch of other players we already know what we think of jonathan taylor as a potential first round pick and the guy that we think is going to soak up a lot of work in that offense so i I think the the last hurrah has happened for ty hilton all right let's go to the game start with the friday game new orleans minnesota little christmas special for you here uh pretty interesting that marshawn Lattimore was covering justin jefferson for the most part so that was uh, the guy that they decided to stick their Cover guy on their uh, best corner back on. Uh, all right. Yeah. Let's just get one thought from every game here. Heath, give me one thought from New Orleans and Minnesota. But it was interesting. They put Marcus Lattimore on Justin. <laughs> no. um, like we talked about Alvin Kamara already. It was interesting going through the rankings process, trying to guess who I thought the Saints quarterback was going to be. And I did not enjoy that. I hope we find that out early in the offseason. You know, because we talked about it in the context of Michael Thomas and Kamara, but I actually think Taysom Hill could be a top 12 quarterback. I mm-hmm. think so. It, yeah. I mean, if it's not pretty, I, yeah. And then you're going to give him a whole off season to work and, and, you know, work on the little things to be a better quarterback at the NFL level. I, I'm, I, I don't mind taking a chance on him as a low end starting quarterback and then backing him up with another quarterback. The position's going to be deep next year. There's no question. So if you wait, you can probably get yourself two lottery tickets at the quarterback spot, hoping that one of them ends up being, you know, like a Aaron Rodgers, Ryan Tannehill type of guy who can end up, you know, being a, an amazing value for your fantasy squad. That's the secret to, you know, cheating on your draft, finding that late guy. And this year was Aaron Rodgers. So we'll, we'll see if Taysom Hill can be that guy. Adam Trotman's been a favorite of mine for a while. I wonder if they move on from Jared Cook. Could Adam Trotman be a a breakout player in that offense, be their number one tight end? He's definitely got a great athletic profile. And the whole Justin Jefferson thing is interesting. Who did you rank higher between Thielen and Jefferson? And are you going to keep it that way no matter what you did? Everyone's ranking Jefferson higher. Thielen was not in my top 12. I, I, I think... I think Jefferson will end up being ranked higher. I don't know if that's going to necessarily be correct because as up and down as, as Adam Thielen was, just you can't deny the touchdowns. And you yeah, know that like, he's got good chemistry. And now, and now if, if what New Orleans did on defense is any indication, he's going to start seeing non-number one coverage. He had 80 yards. This, this is Metcalf and Lockett. 
right? I mean, I'm going to take the young guy who's having a much better rookie season than DK Metcalf had. Let's say that. Sure. But having one of the best rookie seasons ever for a wide receiver, it's hard to do this and not back it up. I mean, he could be he could be the number one wide receiver in fantasy next year. That's how good his rookie wide his rookie season was. It's it's staggering. Not and to mention still, the first round pick. Sure, but still, Adam Thielen could be very good for fantasy, and he'll end up being a good value. I don't think Thielen will be a top twenty four pick by any stretch. No, but I, I bet you he ends up going in round three, late round three in PPR anyway. Yeah. All right. Uh, next game is San Francisco 20, Arizona 12. All right. I'll give you guys a talking point here. I think we can. We're skipping about... over Bucks and Lions. Uh, I have that. Next. I mean, we can. No, I have that next. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. A little, a little out of order in terms of time, time of day. Uh, San Francisco, Arizona. So we talked about San Francisco a lot. How about Arizona? Um, all right. Like in a dynasty league, do you, like do you even want like Kenyon Drake and and uh, and Chase Edmonds? Mm-hmm. You know, this is where I hope Travis. Could you imagine if Travis Etienne ends up in Arizona? That'd be nice. I mean, you know, it, where I want him to go. I want him to go to. Pittsburgh. Well, Kenyon Drake's yeah, sure. a free agent, right? Right, he was franchised, so they can walk away from him. And I believe Edmonds is still under contract for another year. So they're going to be in the market to add another running back. It would kind of stink to see ETN go to Arizona on one hand because Kyler Murray can take numbers away from him. But on the other hand, if, if they, and this is the whole other thing, can they use him the right way? We've seen it with, with the Cardinals where they've had a hard time figuring out the best way to use their running back, certainly this year. Uh, not as much last year when Drake got there. But before Drake got there, there were some concerns about how Cliff Kingsbury was using his running back or lack thereof. So maybe I don't want ETN to end up there. I want ETN to go somewhere where he can just absolutely. It might just be one more year of Cliff Kingsbury. Yeah, it's true. Possible. Uh, All right. So I don't don't think there's a lot of excitement about these two in Dynasty. I guess that's my my big takeaway. Or No, there's no way. That matter. Okay. Tampa Bay 47 and Detroit 7. Uh, Just a butt butt kicking here. And what did you guys think of Keyshawn Vaughn? I feel like everybody was kind of excited oh. about him in the first half, and then in the second half, he wasn't so good. But what did you know? I thought he got off to a good start. I thought he, he ran the ball a little bit better than Leonard Fournette did. We'll see what it leads to. I yeah. think anybody that's sharing with Leonard Fournette is going to, like, <laughs> not, and not, yeah. this is not an anti Leonard Fournette thing. I believe that he looks slower when he runs than he actually is. You know, okay, that is. It so looks perfect. like he's running with his eyes closed. It's so perfectly said because what I think is that I think he is kind of not quick, and so he like he makes a lot of bad runs, but he's also like kind of like Derrick Henry when he's a bigger bigger guy, but not like Henry. But when he does pick up speed, he gets pretty fast and he can run off these like eighty yard runs. Yeah. You know, so it, it's like he's tough to evaluate because a lot of times he looks like crap, but then. Oh my gosh, Leonard Fournette just broke off a 70 yard run. That happens. So I, maybe it's just like he's totally dependent on his offensive line. He's a very difficult player to evaluate. I, I just, I never well, know if he's good or bad. I'm leaning he's not very good. I don't think he's very good either. And he's also going to be a free agent. He only signed a one year deal with Tampa Bay after the Jaguars cut him. And if they don't resign him, I think that's telling. Uh, what are your thoughts on DeAndre Swift now? It's, uh, you know, a bad I hope they bring in the right coaching staff. I, did you guys get him into your top 12? No. No. I couldn't. I was, he was um, just outside. I think I had him 13. Actually, I didn't do a top 12 running backs officially, but I have 12 of them in my top 24. And he's not in, he's not in my second round. Nope. He's not in mine either. But this is like, you know, you know how it is. Early third round, mid third round picks. They're great players too. Um, all right. That would be that game. And Miami 26. Woo, what a fun game, man. What a game. Miami Do you agree or disagree with what John Gruden did at the end, telling Josh Jacobs not to score? I I think I disagree. I think I do, too. I yeah, just think I that it's just the kickers are so good now that it just it doesn't take much to get into field goal range. I'll tell you another thing I disagree with. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, if you can do it where you're not going to leave any time on the clock, I'm all for it. But you can't give any team 19 seconds. You can't do that. 
look, I, that's what that's what struck me as odd. Ridiculous that they gave up that pass play. <laughs> but the sure. penalty is always a possibility. You know, that's what scares me. A pass interference or the face mask. Go ahead, Heath. I just think it is far more egregious if they actually start Tua this week when a loss is going to knock them out of the playoffs. Yeah, but look what's working for them. This this whole process that they've got is working for them. I, Who do the Colts play this week? The Jaguars? Yes. Yes. And the Titans play the Texans? So it does look like a loss will probably knock them out because they there is a way that they can lose and still get in. They just need... I think one of the AFC South teams to lose or the Ravens are not going to, Oh no. You know, I think if they lose and Cleveland loses, not sure about that. I I'm sorry. I don't know, but you're right. And it's the same argument, right? Um, now they're going back to Tua. I don't think they should, but they are. Uh, what I was going to say is what I didn't agree with was after the penalty and the completion, they had about nine seconds left, I think. And they had no timeouts and they ran a play. And Fitzpatrick just threw the ball out of bounds. There's almost nothing good that can come out of that. They shouldn't have run a play at all. They should have just kicked, but didn't end up mattering. Anyway, <laughs> um, what do you think about Josh Jacobs? 13 carries for 69 yards. And he will end the season. Will he get to 40 catches? I don't even know how many catches he has. 35-ish? I'm pulling it up right now. Josh Jacobs the number nine running back in PPR scoring has 33 catches, probably not getting to 40. He might not get to 35. I think it's been such a disappointing year. It's weird that he's as high as he is. I've been very, well, he's got 1200 yards and 10 touchdowns. I wish that, I guess I just wish they had been a little bit more evenly distributed because he didn't, he score three in week one. And he missed a game too, right? Mm -hmm. So 1200 yards and 10 touchdowns in 14 games. So how are you going to spin it? I mean, do you look at that positively or are you a little underwhelmed or both? He was not in my top 12 running backs, um, Same. but he was just outside. Yeah, he'll, he'll be a second round pick. I was hoping for superstardom, basically. Me too. We all were. And maybe, you know, the, the, the Raiders, like I said, I think they're going to dedicate a lot of this offseason to improving their defense and that'll help Josh Jacobs and we'll see what the offensive line looks like. But I, I don't think we could look at him and say, okay, there's a candidate for 50 receptions anymore. How were we ranking Jacobs, Montgomery and Sanders for next year? I, uh, I still like Sanders the best. I went Sanders, Jacobs, Montgomery. Yeah. That's how, how I'm going to be too. I had Montgomery the uh, highest. <laughs> wow. Okay. That, that is, you talk about cold sweats. That is going to be the bears evaluation is just going to be other than Allen Robinson. But uh, if but, and that's the thing I, is and they, there's they may bring the band that. back. Well, <laughs> does that include Tariq Cohen? Oh, I expect that's so. going to hurt. That's going to hurt David Montgomery. No Wait. question. Okay. Well, uh, jets, 23 Cleveland, 16 way to go. Jets. Number two pick. Hey, if you're going to lose Trevor Lawrence, lose him all the way. Yeah, and they're going to bring they're going to bring the band back. Adam Gase, contract extension. Uh, uh, okay, never mind. But um, this was such an unfortunate game for Mayfield. Only seven fantasy points, and Chubb stunk too. He and Hunt both scored. Luckily, I guess I don't have that much to say about this game. Is Chubb still a first round pick in fantasy in 2021? I think I had him at 12. I had him at 15. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a slam dunk. So do you have Zeke or, or Chubb ahead? I had Zeke higher. I kept switching them. I started with Chubb higher. I may finish with Chubb higher. I started Chubb 14, Zeke 15, and I switched them. But I think we're all on the same page. Well, right? the late, good news late, is that late. you're allowed to change your mind between now and September. <laughs> I know. All right, Keith. I can't even imagine. Like, we should go back and look at what our rankings were a year ago for when we did these early 2020 rankings. Um, all right. Pittsburgh 28, Colts 24. And we talked about Jonathan Taylor and T.Y. Hilton. So let's do something with Pittsburgh here. Who's going to be your highest ranked Pittsburgh receiver next year, Heath? Let's say Juju's back. No, oh, probably Deontay Johnson. Um, and maybe in my my five months of offseason, I can figure out what I don't get about Deontay Johnson, but probably Deontay Johnson. Who's the quarterback? For this exercise, it's bad. Okay. 
I, I think there's a pretty decent chance Ben does come back, but I'm not 100% sure about it. So if, if they go young at quarterback, that could throw everything out of whack with, with these receivers. And I, I think there will be fewer. Be I feel like every year there are so many people that are dying to get their hands on Smith Schuster and fantasy. The demand for him this off season will be at an all time low, which isn't to say that no one's going to be interested in Smith Schuster, but I don't, I don't think people are going to be as into him now after the year that he just had. All right. Next game is Baltimore 27, New York giants, 13, the Giants, the Ravens were so dominant in the first quarter. They did their just patented milk the clock, score some points. The Giants ran three plays in the first quarter. Uh, okay, let's see what we got from this game here. Sterling Shepard had a pretty good game. Nine catches, 77 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, Thanks, Sterling. <laughs> I don't know. I, I really don't. Okay, I'm, no, Tom. How many started fantasy points did he get for that? <laughs> he was only started 17% of leagues. Uh, um, all right, so l- let's talk about J.K. Dobbins because it's a touchdown in five straight games now. Yeah, and he had o- only eleven carries, seventy-seven. He was so he's so good. I know. I'm I'm tempted to put him in my top twelve. What do you guys think, Heath? I think he'll be in the teens for me at running back. Like, there's a lot of rookie running backs that didn't quite make my top twelve that I know will be in my top twenty. Um, Antonio Gibson. DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, probably Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Um, so that, that that whole – and there will probably be some rookies that are in that same range. Mm-hmm. I yeah. had a good talking point from this game. Go ahead. Where does Daniel Jones rank amongst all the quarterbacks, healthy and unhealthy, in the NFC East? I oh. think – you know, I actually thought about this today. <laughs> Where does he rank right now or, you know – No, the- like – Dak is Dak. Uh, Dak is one. Hertz is going to be second. I don't think Wentz is going to be in the NFC East. But he is currently. He's better than Daniel Jones. I think he is too. Yeah. Right so, now he is. Yeah. So I think Jones is going to have to be fourth. Listen, I know you hate Daniel Jones, and I get it. It was just a question. Yeah, he's fourth, but he's better than anyone on Washington. I don't know that he is better than Andy Dalton. Well, I didn't say that. Uh, oh, I did say he's fourth. Um, I'd rather have Jones and Dalton. But no, actually, right now, I'd probably rather have Dalton. But I, yeah, look, yeah, like but if not you're playing your week dynasty 17 league. and we're drafting quarterbacks for who's going to play in these must win games. Sure. Andy Dalton oh. gets drafted before Daniel Jones. Andy Dalton against the Giants or Daniel Jones against the Cowboys? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I'm going Dalton. So I still don't think Daniel Jones is fully healthy because he had three rushing yards. He's not really running, but he's healthier than he was. I, the Giants are going to add a wide receiver for sure. Their wide receivers are dreadful. They're dreadful. Um, they're going to be a different offense. He's, he's going to be a two QB league sleeper. All right. I'm telling you two QB league sleeper. That is as far as I'm willing to go. <laughs> <laughs> Cincinnati 37, Houston 31. Um, all right. Let's see what we got here. So yeah, if you start a geo, you got, you got 130 yards and seven catches. That's terrific. But you're kind of pissed that Samaj P. Ryan had 13 carries and two touchdowns. But that shows you just how bad the Houston run defense is. Just ask J.J. Watt. He went nuts. I, like, I don't know that Deshaun Watson should not be the number two quarterback in your ranking. He was my number two quarterback. Oh, he is? Yes. Good for you. Because he's like, it's, I don't know that I would do it necessarily, but I deserve <laughs> To be in that discussion because he is play, he's so, he's amazing. He's just Can you believe that I've got a family member who who's trying to debate me that Watson isn't as good as Mitchell Trubisky? No, you don't. I swear to God, it's happening. And I, I look, it's the easiest argument in the world. High schoolers. I know it's it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, but yeah, Watson's doing what he's doing without Will Fuller. And without the benefit of the offensive line they were supposed to have and with bad coaching, this is another team where I hope they make a 10 out of 10 hire. Just like perfect job. Eric bien would be amazing here. Would love to see him in Houston to get his hands on Deshaun Watson. And I still think the offense should and probably will run through him. I don't think you, you go and you add a running back or you improve a run game and say, we're going to take pressure off of Deshaun Watson. No, put the pressure on Deshaun Watson. Let him make plays. Uh, top five fantasy quarterback next year, for sure. Uh, fun fact. Mm-hmm. There were six quarterbacks from 2017 through 2019 who scored 400 fantasy points. 
There have already been six this year. Holy, that's that is a great stat. Uh, good for you. That's stat of the year. <laughs> stat of the year. Uh, what a what an offensive year this was. It was fun for fantasy for sure. All right, Chicago forty one, Jacksonville seventeen, and all right. Like, how much are you buying the Dario Gumbawale? The Bears offense. They've had a lot of great matchups in terms of future. Yeah. Or week 17 and the playoffs. Week 17 is going to be against Green Bay, which has something to play for. I, I, yeah. I, I, I'd be well, nervous about the Bears. They, their kryptonite is the Packers. Yeah, no, I mean, like, uh, yeah, do you buy David Montgomery? Is he good? Yes, I, 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 I think. But I'm using the word good and not very good. And I do think he needs a good offensive line. He he definitely needs that assistance. But, but I'm worried about him getting this much work next year, for sure. Do you think his current offensive line, like I, I agree 100%, his current offensive line is much better than his last year offensive line and then his early season offensive line? Well, but middle it, season offensive line, I would it's kind of say. It's average currently. Which is good. This for him, right. Year, but he does good. It, average is good. The, but I think the like the point I'm trying to make is you don't I don't look at David Montgomery over the next three years and think if he doesn't have a great offensive line he's not going to be any good. I'm just thinking I need him to have an average offensive line. Yeah, uh, and we'll see what happens with three cone. All right, who'd you take next year, James Robinson or David Montgomery? Robinson, for sure. Okay, Kansas City 17. You're going to kill me, but I didn't put him in my top 24. Kansas City 17. You didn't put James Robinson in your top 24. No. Atlanta good. 14. Good. <laughs> I, I get it. I, I think he, you can make the case that he's a bus candidate, but I, you that know, offense is about to get better. It is. I don't, I just think there's so much uncertainty around that team. New coach, you know, they have a new coaching staff, of new general manager. He's an undrafted free agent. I don't know how committed they're going to be to him. But they're going to bring in competition. It just that there's just so much up in the air with Jacksonville. I, I can't remember who brought it up, but one of us did. It wasn't me to say that Jacksonville has so many issues on both sides of the ball. Why would they go and add a running back when they can get by for a year with James Robinson? Now it's different if it's a day three running back or a free agent, but no, it's absolutely, sure. absolutely. Yeah. All right. Kansas city, 17, Atlanta, 14. Well, I don't it would know be fun they... if, if somehow they got Travis ETN back with uh, Trevor oh, that'd Lawrence. Be cool. That'd be yeah. fun. I don't know how the chiefs won this game. Young way. Koo, just, uh, just uh, Falcons <laughs> are going to Falcon, man. I guess so. Um, all right, let's see what we got. The from Falcons Jets. are like the Jets. They know how to lose to help their draft position. So do you guys think Edo Smith has any potential? No. Okay. I think I'm good here. Hayden Hurst, he's, he's got, yeah, I'm good. Uh, Hayden Hurst, um, well, what do you think about Hayden Hurst in week 17 at Tampa Bay? Um, say it, yeah. I don't want to start him. Oh, I thought you were going to just say five. Five. That would have been perfect. <laughs> Dang it. All right, let's go to the late games. Chargers 19, Denver 16. So Drew Locke, like, he's not good. But yeah. did you see all the Jerry Judy hate on Twitter? Oh, yeah. my God. I feel bad I for I think me. that was almost one of my, um, believe it or not, and it probably should have been. I may change it. Uh, Jerry Judy is a dynasty buy right now. Oh my gosh, yes. I, I, I'm stunned. I'm stunned at what I've seen this whole year from Judy. I thought he was the most NFL ready receiver in this draft class. Well, I think some. Of my personal opinion is there's some some nerves, um, some jitters. The route running is an Amazing. NFL already flawless. He's getting double digit targets when he can't catch anything because he's always open. Mm -hmm. um, but don't forget about Corlin Sutton, though. This don't he used to true. be able to catch. He used to be able to catch real good. So <laughs> I think <laughs> he will remember how to catch this off season. I hope so. Be a fantastic next year. I think he works out near our office. We should uh, stalk him. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. That's no, it's, we're not going to stalk him. We're going to politely ask if we can hang while he runs routes and stuff like that. Okay. All right. That's Jerry Judy. Yeah. He dropped, he had a bad drop late in the game. Probably could really cost them the game. They would have been in field goal range. Uh, Carolina 20 and Washington 13. And 
Uh, Mike, Mike Davis goes out with a whimper, 14 carries, 28 yards, and he did score. That was nice. I'm very frustrated by DJ Moore. I didn't think he would struggle in this game. He got 10 targets. What do the Panthers do at quarterback this offseason? I don't think Bridgewater is the answer. I think they know that. Well, before we get into that, just give me your assessment, Dave, of the wide receivers. For Carolina? Yeah, because Curtis Samuel deserves a lot of credit. He had 100 yards. It looks he like does. he's really breaking out. Yeah, I mean, I just I wish that we had that consistency with him. But he's, he's just a good X weapon in that offense. Just someone that they could use in a bunch of different ways. And he's, he's made it so that you can't feel great about starting more and Robbie Anderson from week to week. And everything was backward this week that it was, it was Samuel that had the most yardage. Robbie had the touchdown and DJ Moore is the one that left you high and dry. And I, sad. I did not Tough realize this, but DJ Moore and Robbie Anderson, both over a thousand yards receiving. That's pretty good, man. Yeah. That's pretty good. Robbie, especially very quietly got there. No question. Who's getting drafted earlier next year. It's, it's more. Yeah. Oh yeah. Seattle 20 and the Rams. Anderson might end up being a good value draft. You think about how different this game, Seattle and the Rams felt going into it, you know, than it did five or six weeks ago or whatever it was six weeks. I think when they first played, when they first played, we thought it was going to be kind of a shootout. Now these teams are built on their defense and I, you know, I guess we should really talk about Russell Wilson because this is two years in a row where he's been, unbelievable for the first half of the season and really pretty bad for fantasy for the second half. Yeah. And I just don't know, Heath, I'll give you the first word. How are you evaluating Russell Wilson? I think I had him seventh or eighth in my quarterback rank back rankings. Um, I don't really know what to make of it. It doesn't make very much sense to me. And like he was, he was not particularly good today, but he didn't kill you either. 22 fantasy points. You know, he missed Jacob Hollister wide open for like a 30 yard touchdown. If he yep. can put that pass, he actually has a huge game. Uh, he had DK on, on a deep one too. And uh, airmailed it a little bit. And that's weird. You st- he missed two downfield throw. I mean, that's just weird. Uh, all right. Chris Carson. Eh, not a great yeah. game. Oh, this game was what we expected. Yeah. Was, he's uh, another free agent to be that may not be with his team next year. Rashad Penny could end up being a very popular trendy breakout pick. And finally, Dallas 37 and Philadelphia 17. Is Miles Sanders having a good end of the season or a bad end of the season? Because he had 15 carries for 57 yards and a touchdown, but he also had four catches. I don't think you're unhappy with what you got out of Miles Sanders it's not, this week. It's Last not, week you did. I have a different question, though. I, like, do you, do you think he's finishing strong? Or just kind of getting lucky because he's finding the end zone. I, I think it depends on what you're like. No, I don't really think he's finishing strong, but it depends on where your expectations are at right now as well. Um, like it's, I think we probably need to remember he was a late first, early second round pick, consensus top twelve guy. He's not finishing strong for that kind of guy, but it seems like in the second half we've kind of changed our expectation to where he's a, a number two running back with good upside, and, and he's doing fine for that. A year ago, we were begging we were praying that he would end up as the lead back for philadelphia and he had to be he he should be and then the eagles coaching staff came out and said yeah he's going to be our workhorse guy are they going to do it are they going to give him that same type of lip service this offseason and maybe they do because they don't have anybody else at running back I, i i can't see them feeling good about anybody else that they currently have but this could be they they could soil him and, and added running back in the draft. They didn't do it last offseason, but they could do it this offseason. I think it's encouraging, though, that he's had four catches in two of three games with Jalen Hurts, right? Sure. It's not, was he in your top 12? He was not. Uh, no, I had him like, oh, top 12 running backs or overall? Yeah. Running backs. Yes. I don't think I did have him. He's two, not in three, my four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let me just tell you that next year's drafts are going to be so much fun. It's deep. It's really deep. It is. It's, well, that's it, because we had so much offense this year that just everybody feels. Yep. Yep. And yep. all the players that got hurt are going to be healthy again. I mean, my, it sounds like Keith and I have the same number one guy. And it's a guy who played three games in 2020. I, I, He's fresh. That's a th- I think like everybody's going to have, I, I don't know anyone who doesn't have him 
number one, McCaffrey. It's so interesting. But God, he was so good when he played. It was so good. All right. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll get into 2021 more and more throughout the week. Tomorrow, Chris and Ben and I will be on to answer your five big topics. And thanks to Dave and Heath. This has been your week 16 recap. Hope you won your championship. If you didn't yes. win it tonight, hope you win it on Monday night. And uh, have a good one, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Janu. Want more of the Fantasy Football Today podcast and nonstop year-round fantasy advice? It's simple. Hit the subscribe button and hang with us all throughout the year.